Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. On a branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. Just then, a duck came waddling round. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. Seeing the duck, the little bird flew down upon the grass, settled next to her and shrugged her shoulders. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, said she. To this the duck replied, What kind of a bird are you if you can't swim? And dived into the pond. argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. she crept towards her on her velvet paws. <laughs> oh! 
Look out! shouted Peter, and the bird immediately flew up into the tree. while the duck quacked angrily at the cat. From the middle of the pond. The cat walked round the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Grandfather came out. He was angry because Peter had gone into the meadow. It is a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? Peter paid no attention to his grandfather's words. Boys like him are not afraid of wolves. Grandfather took Peter by the hand, locked the gate, and led him home. Peter gone, and a big grey wolf came out of the forest. In a twinkling, the cat climbed up the tree. The duck quacked and in her excitement jumped out of the pond. No matter 
how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, catching up with her. And then he got her, and with one gulp, swallowed her. Now this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch. The bird on another. Not too close to the cat. walked round and round the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate watching all that was going on. He ran home, got a strong rope, and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch. Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle round the wolf's head, only take care that he doesn't catch you. touched the wolf's head with her wings, while the wolf snapped angrily at her from this side and that. the bird did worry the wolf, how he wanted to catch her. But the bird was cleverer, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso, 
and carefully letting it down. Caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. And the wolf's jumping only made the rope round his tail tighter. Just then, the hunters came out of the woods. Following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went. Peter, sitting in the tree, said, Don't shoot! Birdie and I have caught the wolf. Now help us to take him to the zoo. in the triumphant procession. Peter at the head. To him, the hunters leading the wolf.
winding up the procession, Grandfather and the cat. Grandfather tossed his head discontentedly. Well, and if Peter hadn't caught the wolf, what then? merrily. My, what brave fellows we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. one would listen very carefully, one could hear the duck quacking inside the wolf, because the wolf in his hurry had swallowed her alive. 